Hello friends and welcome back. Today we will discuss about three lines of defense in risk management as this is the backbone of a resilient risk management strategy. So grab a notepad and let's explore why these three lines of defense are crucial and what each line brings to the risk management table. Before we move forward, let's understand why these three lines of defense matter. The three lines of defense model has been adopted by various organizations to strengthen their enterprise risk management capabilities across all business units and promoting a resilient enterprise risk management program. This model outlines the distinct roles and responsibilities of risk owner and risk management professionals in effectively addressing and managing risks within an organization. What is first line of defense? First line of defense is operational management. First line of defense is often implemented by the business unit or business functions that perform daily operation activities and especially those that are front lines of the enterprise, right? Operational managers or business owners are responsible for managing risk and they are the risk owners. So risk owners are responsible for implementing corrective actions to address risk and keep it within acceptable levels. For example, in a financial service organization, the frontline staff in a branch is responsible for ensuring that security measures are in place, like customer service representatives ensure this by verifying customer identity or other authentication methods. Similarly, like cashiers who handle cash deposits and withdrawals adhere to security measures like verifying signatures and confirming identity. Similarly, branch manager is responsible for overall operations of branch and ensures compliance and conduct regular staff trainings and awareness sessions. So, in the above example, all staff performing day-to-day -day functions collectively act as a first line of defense. What are the expectations and responsibilities from first line of defense? Creating a risk-aware culture which involves educating employees about potential risk, encouraging open communications about concerns, and providing training sessions on recognizing and reporting suspicious activities. Implementing clear guidelines and procedures includes defining roles and responsibilities for identifying, assessing, and addressing risk, especially in activities that drive corporate growth, right? And these guidelines should be easily accessible and consistently applied across all the business units following standard protocols to mitigate risks. First line of defense are expected to monitor and maintain effective internal controls, which includes identifying potential weaknesses, implementing corrective actions and ensuring that the internal controls remain aligned with the organization's objectives, right? Second line of defense typically involves risk management and compliance functions that provide oversights and support to the first line of defense. Within the second line of defense, risk management functions are focused to ensure that first line defense are properly designed, implemented, and operating as intended, right? Establishing a clear and widely accepted standard for risk management practices is important for ensuring the effectiveness and efficiency of an organization's risk management program. This standard serves as a benchmark and some of the advantages of developing a standard is reducing audit effort. By having a pre-established standard, auditors can focus their efforts on assessing the organization's adherence to the standard rather than spending their time and resources on developing their own evaluation criteria. It minimizes false positive standardized approach, reduces the likelihood of auditors identifying issues based on subjective interpretations or industry practices that may not align with the organization's specific context, right? It ensures aligned audit focus. The standard ensures that auditors' efforts are directed towards evaluating the organization's risk management practices against its own established criteria. So what are the expectations from second line of defense? The expectation is to establish business aligned risk management framework as the second line is responsible for developing risk management frameworks that are personalized to the specific needs and business objectives of the organization. This involves 
identifying key risk assessing their potential impact and establishing strategies to mitigate those risks for example a financial institutions risk management framework might focus on identifying and managing risk associated with credit market fluctuations and operational failure side developing monitoring and overseeing risk management programs this involves ensuring that the program is effective in identifying assessing and addressing risk in a timely and efficient manner a company's risk management program include regular risk assessments training for employees on risk identification and mitigation and incident response procedures monitoring and ensuring compliance with risk management policies it involves identifying any potential gaps or inconsistencies and taking corrective actions to ensure compliance regular reporting on risk profile posture and exposure of organization this includes identifying emerging risk assessing their potential impact and reporting on the status of ongoing risk mitigation activities changes in organization environment might also result in changes in risk profile right communicating threats to stakeholders this includes providing timely and accurate information about the nature of threat its potential impact and organization's plan for mitigation the third line of defense is our internal audit function it plays a crucial role in ensuring the effectiveness of an organization's risk management practices by conducting independent reviews audit provides assurance to senior management and governing body that the organization's risk management program is operating effectively and the risks are being managed appropriately what are the expectations from third line of defense the expectation is to assess conformance to risk management standards this involves examining where the organization is adhering to its own risk management policies procedures and frameworks like there is a famous quote do what you write and write what you do so internal audit function ensures this review and evaluate risk management design and implementation and internal auditor acts as a quality control inspector inspecting the overall design and implementation of organization's risk management program this involves assessing whether the risk management program is personalized to organization specific needs and objectives whether it is being implemented effectively across all business units or if it is achieving its intended purpose of identifying assessing and mitigating risks like checking if there are sufficient training program for all the employees if risk communication channels are clear and effective or not third line of defense ensures effectiveness of first line and second line of defense as we discussed first line of defense consists of operational managers who are responsible for managing risks in their day to day activities the second line of defense includes risk management professionals who develop and oversee risk management strategies and procedures so an internal auditor assesses the effectiveness of these two lines of defense by evaluating their ability to identify assess and manage risks in timely and appropriate manner in short first line of defense provides risk ownership and accountability second line of defense provides risk management which includes risk practitioners and core processes third line of defense provide assurance and oversight what is the relationship between three lines of defense let's understand it with an example in three lines of defense model we have governing body at the top level the governing body typically consists of board of directors who sits at the top of three lines of defense model this body establishes the organization's overall risk appetite and sets tone for risk management throughout the organization governing body is accountable to its stakeholders for effective oversight of risk in the organization and stakeholders may include customers shareholders suppliers employees or government then we have management body which is responsible for overall management of the organization and for achieving the organization's objectives and this includes first line and second line of defense internal audit is a function which provides independent assurance audit provides the governing body and senior management the independent report on the conformance 
with the applicable standards and frameworks which are identified and adopted by the organization so i hope now you are able to understand what are three lines of defense and how they are interconnected and how they collaborate with each other to achieve the organization's objectives thank you for patiently listening see you in another video with another topic soon consider joining me on linkedin thank you have a nice day